It's no secret that it's hard to pass on short tracks with the NASCAR Next Gen car, but that actually comes down to a multitude of factors. The first and most apparent one is space, just because smaller tracks like Martinsville only really offer a lane and a half for passing. In order to understand the impact of that limited space, let's look at an example here of two cars trying to catch each other entering a turn on a short track like Martinsville. That limited space will result in the following car eventually overlapping the leading car in constricted spaces like Martinsville, which means that the air coming off the leading car will end up impacting the following car. That air coming off the leading car will eventually slow down the following car, preventing them from being able to make a pass. And this is very much a short track specific issue where space is limited because on larger mile and a half tracks, because the track itself is wider, the following car can go hunt for clean air and not have that overlap that would impact its speed. In order to understand why this is exaggerated with the next gen car, we need to understand the other factor, which is how the car creates downforce and the design of the underbody compared to the previous generation car and something like an Xfinity car. The key to this is understanding a factor called yaw angle. The simplest definition of yaw angle is that it is the difference between where a car is pointed and the direction that it is moving. In order to understand yaw angle, we'll move our cars around here and have two separate examples where we have the Camaro on a straightaway while the Camry is in a turn. Let's start with the Camry and draw a line of where it is moving into the turn. In addition to that, we'll draw another line of where the car is pointed. The difference between those two lines is the yaw angle. Now, if we look at the Camaro, we can see that it's moving straight and also pointed straight, so there is no yaw. And that is basically the difference between no yaw and a car having yaw angle as it enters a turn. The easiest way to look at the Camry up here is to consider that the steering wheel and the car are moving in this direction, but the car itself is still pointed in this direction, and that difference is the yaw angle. The reason the yaw is significant is because as a car gains yaw angle, it will typically lose downforce, and in the NASCAR Next Gen car, that happens very, very quickly. In order to understand how the NASCAR Next Gen car produces downforce, let's take a look at the underside here. In this configuration, air enters underneath the splitter and is sent back to the diffuser, which is how that downforce is generated. Flat bottom cars often lose downforce quickly as the angle of yaw increases. With the Generation 6 NASCAR Cup car, peak downforce could be reached around 3 degrees of yaw and it could be pushed around 6 degrees of yaw or so before downforce fell off. That window is much smaller in the NASCAR Next Gen car, which sees downforce fall off a cliff after about a degree and a half or 2 degrees of yaw. What that means is that the Gen 6 Cup car and something like an Xfinity car will gain some downforce as it enters a turn before eventually falling off. While the NASCAR Next Gen car has such a small window that it's basically immediately losing downforce as it gets into the turn. NASCAR has attempted to mitigate some of these issues with the new short track package where they seek to shift the downforce from the bottom of the car to the top of the car by making changes to that diffuser and removing some of the outer strakes. They've now shifted some of that downforce from the bottom of the car to the top by increasing the size of that spoiler of the truck lid. And all of this is why it doesn't make sense to just take downforce away. The balanced approach from NASCAR of shifting downforce to the top is exactly what's needed to fix the issue, but unfortunately it's really only a small incremental solution because the size of these tracks combined with the lack of tire falloff means that we won't really see a huge difference from the changes to that diffuser. Track position will likely still be king at Martinsville and at other short tracks this season, which is why there will be a lot of importance on qualifying and on pit road. Speaking of pit road, being a pit crew athlete requires energy and protein, which is why I enjoyed these grab the gold cookies, which feature carbs and protein to keep me going throughout the day, whether I'm competing or just want a little treat. Use promo code BOZI, B-O-Z-I at grabthegold.com to get 10% off your order.